as a complete pile of rust that had moss growing on the paint and sections of the truck that no longer existed, I had a massive undertaking to even turn this truck into a rat rod. Should I do a restoration type build or more of a rat rod type build? After an unimaginable amount of work and dedication, my 1968 C10 has been completely rebuilt from scratch with my very own hand-built chassis and redesigned body that makes this truck a very unique build. With big plans, my Rat Rod C10 is now shaping up to be a one-off carbon fiber masterpiece if I can conquer the art of resin-infused carbon fiber. to the channel everyone. Today we're gonna make the first few big strides towards making this an all carbon fiber C10. Just to be clear with you guys, what I mean by making a 100% carbon fiber C10 body means that these metal panels are not gonna be just reskinned with carbon fiber material. They're gonna be made from 100% carbon fiber fabric. So it's gonna be extremely light, it's gonna look super cool, and my goal is even to be making this cab from scratch with carbon fiber as well. So I'm not sure if I'm in over my head, but it's gonna be super interesting and I can't wait to dive in. But there's still a few things I need to do before I can start making these carbon fiber parts. And we're gonna get to it right now. At the time of recording this, I'm still waiting for my carbon fiber supplies to arrive, but while I'm waiting, I'm gonna take advantage of it and finish the bodywork on the box of the truck. I'm also gonna prep my fuel cell plate. My plan is to make this plate out of carbon first. Since it's nice and flat, it'll be a lot easier to practice on than a complex quarter panel and a lot less material if I do end up messing up. So this steel plate that's sitting on top of my frame is a plate that I made a while back in a video and I had just drawn it up on a piece of paper and then I made it out of quarter inch steel using a plasma cutter. This plate is very heavy. So with my carbon supplies coming up, I figure I'll have enough scraps to make that plate out of carbon. Not only will it be a lot lighter, it's gonna look cooler as well. The first thing I wanna do, and I actually started already, I applied a coat of body filler on the edges and I'm gonna smooth this out since I'm gonna make a mold. I just finished all the sanding on the plate and I also smoothed out all the edges since it's going to be a highly visible part. Now I need to apply a coat of high build primer on this and it'll be ready to sand with finer grit sandpaper. While I'm priming, I wanna spray the headboard, tailgate and both quarter panels. So today might be the day we finally got some decent weather. At least it's not below freezing so the paint or the primer isn't just gonna freeze in my gun but we're gonna try to apply a coat of high build primer on all the body panels on the box and also that plate that I sanded earlier. panels have been primed you can see that this quarter panel here has a little bit of black spray paint on and that's gonna be used as a guide coat and I'll have to do this with all of these panels and I'm gonna wet sand them with 120 grit sandpaper at first and then go over them again with 320 oh and I can't forget to mention I also primed this plate so we'll have to wet sand that as well
So I sanded down most of this quarter panel with 120 grit sandpaper and the finish is pretty good but there's still some sanding scratches. So I hit this one with 120 followed by 320 and the finish is much better. It's almost shiny. So the box is pretty much ready to go and it's awesome timing because I am expecting a delivery later today. All right guys, so all my carbon fiber supplies have just been delivered to the shop and I am super excited. Let me show you what I just ordered. These are all the materials I've just received from Composite Envisions and they were awesome to deal with. They hooked me up with every single thing I need to start making some carbon fiber parts. So I'm overwhelmed and very excited to start making these parts. But there's gonna be a lot of stuff I need to do before I can actually start. But first, we'll just go over quickly what I just received. So first up, this red roll of mesh is actually called resin flow and as the name suggests it just helps the resin flow through the part when you're making your infusion so I'll go over these things a little better and in more detail once I actually start making the parts I got a roll of peel ply and also a roll of 2x2 two two twill weave carbon fiber fabric so what 2x2 two two twill weave means is just the pattern or the design of the fabric and there's many different kinds available, but this one is the most widely used in the automotive world. This is what you typically see on supercars. So that's the pattern I went with, and this is also 3K fabric. So that means that there's 3,000 little filaments in one toe, or little weave of the carbon fiber fabric. And I also got another roll of the same pattern of fabric but this one is 6K, so there's double the little filaments, which makes it thicker, and it's gonna be used for the reinforcement sections of my carbon fiber parts. And then in the middle of those two fabrics, there's the vacuum bagging film that's gonna be used to um, apply vacuum pressure on these parts. Again, we'll go over all these things when I actually start making the parts. And then over here, we have the rest of my materials. I got a degassing chamber, which also serves the purpose of a catch pot as well. I got some spray tack, some clamps to block off the vacuum lines when I need to, some gum tape, a vacuum pump, which can be run on a 120 volt outlet or 240 volt. And I'll probably be setting up a 240 volt outlet ju just so that it runs more efficiently and at maximum vacuum. And then I also got some vacuum lines, some measuring quartz, and then of course we have the resin and hardener. So there's five gallons of resin and then 1.6 gallons of hardener. One of my Instagram followers actually recommended to me to use this Loctite free coat release agent and apparently it's the best that you can use. And this is also what Composite Envisions uses on their carbon fiber sheets that you can buy from them. So I have a feeling that it's gonna work very well. I can't wait to try it. And I also got a pair of scissors to cut the carbon fiber fabric. That's pretty much it. So there's quite a lot of stuff. A big thank you to Composite Envisions. I'll have a link to their website in the description. If you need any sort of composite materials, they can definitely hook you up. So with the box of the truck almost ready to be made into molds, the obvious next step would be just making the molds. But in my last video, I made a mold of my tailgate and it turned out perfectly. But there's one big problem with that. The epoxy resin that I got to make my carbon fiber parts has to cure at room temperature for 24 hours and then it has to post cure in an oven 
for eight hours at 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And what that means is that my molds have to be able to withstand 180 degrees for eight hours, which the resin that I used for the fiberglass isn't capable of doing so. So basically what I'm saying is the mold that I made for the tailgate is worthless. So I'm gonna have to start from scratch and uh, I'm gonna have to find a new method or a new kind of resin. So I can't just start making the molds, I'm gonna have to wait on some material for that. But the other big thing is I'm gonna have to build an oven that's big enough to fit these massive parts in it. So I'm gonna have to come up with some sort of plan and we're gonna build some sort of creation of an oven to make these parts. So let's get to work. say so for my composite oven I need it to be large enough to fit parts like my quarter panels and the hood and even some sections of the cab so the ovens gonna be massive and technically I only need the oven to go to 180 degrees Fahrenheit but I do want to design this oven to go to higher temperatures in case I ever decide to powder coat, I'll be able to and I may as well do it right while I'm at it. So you guys seen the frame that I had made for the floor and I just straightened out the steel sheets from the oil tank, laid it down on the floor and this is the result. So this is going to be a lot stronger than the 22 gauge steel I'm going to put on the walls. I wanted to make sure my flooring uh, wasn't just going to crumple over time and I also made a door frame with the oil tank steel as well and now that I have the door figured out and the floor. I'm gonna start making some walls. I'll do a quick little time lapse and I'll catch up with you guys in just a minute. So I just installed six 3000 watt elements in my oven. I started wiring them up, but I still got the other side to do. So a lot of you guys are gonna be wondering, how did you come up with the six 3000 watt heating elements for my oven? And the reason I did that is because as a general rule of thumb for powder coating ovens, you want around 100 to 150 watts per cubic feet. That's cubic feet, not square feet, so make sure you get that correct in your calculations. So on the front of the oven, I'm gonna have a window in the door. And what I did is I just cut the window out of an old kitchen oven, and this is gonna be perfect. I modified the uh, thickness slightly so I can put more insulation. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this little window on hinges so that I can open it up and put a thermal gun to measure all my parts and I built a, a little frame out of uh, angle iron. So that's gonna be plenty strong. So the door's coming along and the oven itself is coming along. I put some high temperature sealant just on the steel studs so that the heat doesn't really cross over to the outside. So when I skin the outside, I don't want that to be burning hot. So I think that's gonna work all right. 
put a sheet in the back, put a few rivets, and uh, overall, we're making some good progress. And up on the ceiling, it's hard to see, but there is a 500 CFM fan that I ducted all the way back and it's going through the back wall. And if you come over here, I just have a 90. I'll put another piece of ducting all the way down. And I bought this piece that's just gonna go in the wall, just like this. And then this will be the opening where all the hot air should recirculate back into the oven. So I just measured and cut the sheet to clad the inside of the oven, but before I install it, I wanna start putting some insulation. This is my homemade control panel made from parts that I've sourced from all over the place.
carbon fiber oven is about 90% done. There's just a few little cosmetic things left to do. It's been a massive project so far. The camera really doesn't do justice to show how much work goes into something like this. A lot of time, but I think it's gonna be well worth it. And if I can make all these parts, it's gonna be unbelievable. So let's go to the oven. I'll show you how everything's supposed to work. So I just turned on the breaker in the main panel. So I should have some power on my control box that I built from scratch. And just to give you guys a little rundown of what everything here does, these are two PID controllers and those just control the temperature. There's two sensors going in that tell these PID controllers what's going on in there. And this pretty much does the rest. I just have to set the temperature that I want and the magic happens within those little devices. So it's pretty cool. So inside my control panel, I have two solid state relays that are controlled by the PID controllers. So there's one right over there, and then the other one is right on the other side. I made a hole inside of my control panel just to connect them to heat sinks. And if you ever have the opportunity to build an oven like this, make sure you can connect those solid state relays to heat sinks. If not, they'll burn up very quickly. So just a quick little tech tip for you guys, if you ever have the opportunity to build an oven like this. These two PID controllers are separate. One does one side of the oven, so the three elements, and then the other does the other three elements. And I just did that in case one fails, I still have half the oven to finish up the part that I'm making. So that worst case, I'm not left stranded with no heat. So the two green lights are just the status indicators for when everything is good. And then the two red lights are when the PID controllers send an alarm signal. So if anything goes wrong, I'll have these red lights to tell me that something's not right. And these little orange lights are just, one is for the lights inside the oven, and then the other one is for the fan inside the oven as well. So that just lights up when it's on. I did play around with the settings a little bit. I had to program in which type of sensor or which type of temperature sensor that I have inside the oven. So now that I set that up, the temperatures displayed on the PID controller are accurate. And the only reason that the uh, elements aren't on right now is because all six elements are going to each individual breakers. So all of them are off right now. So no power is being sent to the elements. But if these breakers were on, the elements would be on. And the reason I tied them to each individual breakers is because I can isolate any element that I want in case there's a problem. And it's just another measure of safety. There's also two separate 60 amp circuits in these panels. So if one side um, has a problem, there's another circuit for the other side, which is just a safety on top of a safety really. So worst case scenario, I can keep cooking my parts and I don't lose thousands of dollars worth of fabric and resin that I couldn't post cure. And here in the front of the oven, I did install a high temperature gasket all the way around the door frame. And I think it looks very tidy. I'm super impressed with how this whole oven turned out inside here. This is why I said it was about 90% done. I am starting to put trim around all the elements, but on this side, I haven't gotten to getting the trim done yet. And the other thing I wanna do is I wanna put some sort of baffles in front of all the elements. If you don't have something in front of the elements, it's gonna heat up one side of your part very quickly. So some sort of baffle is a must. And if you guys have any ideas of the best way to set up baffles, let me know down in the comments. So now that my oven is pretty much ready to go, I just need to make the molds to then make some carbon fiber parts and I'm so excited to start, but I don't have my mold making material yet. Hopefully those will be in very soon and we can start making these parts, but that'll be uh, one of the next few videos. Absolutely can't wait to start and I have a huge surprise for you guys. I can guarantee you that it's a part that you guys will love and I know it's gonna elevate this build to another level, so you won't wanna miss it. So that's gonna do it for this episode. I wish I could have made one part to show you guys how the process works, but I'm still waiting for my mold making materials. 
Hopefully they'll show up soon. And I think for my next episode, I have something else lined up for you guys. So not sure if we'll make a part in the next episode, but it will be coming up soon. You'll definitely want to stick around for that. So with that being said, thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.